We are back in Glamis, California. We are just south of the ranger station on Gecko Road. It is out of season now, so there's nobody out here. We are out here to shake a couple banshees down. Again, little issues that uh, have arisen uh, when uh, the bikes were out. So we decided to take these two out and test them ourselves. See what we can do. If we can break them, they run good. This one here is a what the hell are these damn things again? Okay, this one's <laughs> this one's a 472. So it's a 72 bore with a 115 stroke. Oh, pff, Jesus Christ. Oh. It's out of season. That's what it is. <laughs> but it's not even hot out here. It's 80 degrees right now. It's a beautiful day. Okay, let's start this again. This is a 472. This is a 72 millimeter bore on a 58 millimeter stroke running a 115 rod. It's a four mil stroker. It's a cub. It's called a super cub. Four mil super cub, 472. Okay, on to this guy. This guy's got all his plastics on because we just happen to have it and we stuck them all on so it looks pretty. This is a stock cylinder four mil. These are the aftermarket cylinders you can buy anywhere, eBay, they're all over the place. Um, this has got a good healthy like drag play port on it. It's got CPI in frame, small bores. Um, it's running these uh, Nerf bars that I don't care for. We don't use this stuff out in the dunes. We wanna make them light as possible. So uh, this rider likes them. It protects his uh, foot and leg from getting ran over by the back tire. Uh, I don't believe in safety. Screw that stuff. Uh, this is also running knockoff carburetors. We're going to see how these run. Um, particularly not... They don't do well normally. They're hit and miss. Um, but uh, this is what we got. Carburetor shortage has been crappy and... Uh, we're gonna run it with these and see what happens. Dual pingle, they both have dual pingles. They both look great, they're both blue, extended swing arms. Um, this one's got a round swing arm with a roundhouse carrier. That's a square swing arm with a roundhouse carrier. Uh, they're, they're, nice, they're nice bikes. This one's got uh, 21, 12, eight, but they are, they are scat track haulers. I guess they just shave anything and, and uh, put their paddles on it and name it their, their stuff. This one's the same. It, they, they do say scat track haulers on them. So and I guess a different tire uh, manufacturers and they just shave them and uh, put their name on them. They're both pretty bikes. They got uh, lots of bling bling stuff on them. Let's see if they'll run. Um, you go ahead and start this one up. Make sure the gas is on.
something wrong with this one. Yep. Sometimes it will. Uh, it, sometimes it'll get on the pipe, and sometimes it won't. It doesn't matter where the RPM is. Um, it's not a jetting problem because sometimes it's on fire and then sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. But we ran all the electronics on it, and it's a hit and miss problem. Like yep. if there's no load on it, it seems to run like a bat out of hell. And if you put a little load on it, it starts sputtering. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, when we were on our way over here, I think I was in I was in second and I pinned it and it was good when you started speeding up. Uh -huh. And then third, uh, I pinned it, it was good. And then we slowed down and started going up a hill and I was still in third and I was holding it all wide, wide open, open and, and it was just, it was just like, uh... Yeah, it's really, it's really strange. Um, it's an intermittent problem. Um, first of all, I'd like to look the carbs up and see if they're genuine, genuine Kians. Mm -hmm. um, second is uh, we need to swap all the electronics out. And I didn't bring any of that. I should have brought it because uh, it's definitely, it definitely has something somewhere that is not acting right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this thing is really wrong. Heavy runs, it never gets above 180, 182. Good and clean. It's, it's not warm out here, even though it's out of season. We hit a relatively cool day. It's like 80 right now, maybe 82, 83, something like that. And this one's running good. It does have a flat spot in it, and that might be just the symptoms of the knockoff car because the jetty fills right on, but uh, down low, it's got a little flat spot where it doesn't want to rev. Um, 
it is a very aggressive port job. I think it was the play drag um, on this one. So it needs a little RPM and you gotta, you gotta keep it the R's up. And with the paddles in the sand, if you don't have the R's up, it bogs uh, kind of quickly. But it's a handful and fun. What we are doing here is taking parts off this bike to put them on to this bike to see if we can get this bike to run correctly. We started with the normal stuff. I didn't bring all my stuff out like I usually do. Um, so we're doing coil first, then plugs, uh, which we did and didn't have any luck. Now we're doing CDI. Um, after CDI, I didn't bring enough to pull the stator and flywheel off, but we tested all this before we left. And uh, the stator I always test, maybe the coil I didn't, uh, maybe I did. I think both coils are good. Um, so we're on to the CDI, which you really can't test. I will even go as far as the carbs because I believe they're running the exact same carburetor setup. So we'll be able to take a lot out of the loop except for the wiring harness because this got this has all kinds of stuff in the wiring harness that's aftermarket that's wired in um so we won't try that but just about everything else we can do um and hopefully we'll get it running right we'll see um uh, what the hell's going on dead battery what all the way out here. All the way. <sighs> well, it's not gonna. I don't even hear a click. Nothing. Nothing. <sighs> well, what options do we have? I'm too cheap for AAA, so I don't got any of that stuff. <laughs> There's a ranger station right there. There. This is great. One bike doesn't run, run right, and the old truck is trying to give up on me. How do those terminals look? A little are they, cruddy, but are they tight? Yeah, real tight. Okay. Well, I'm gonna walk to the ranger station over here and see if we have anybody there. Hmm. There's nobody out here. I mean, not a soul. There's truckers, the main highway. Oh, well, there's nobody at the ranger station. Not a truck, not a vehicle, nothing. I got jumper cables. We're just gonna die out here in the sun. No. We got cell phones. Let's see what I can do. Walk to the road. Thumb it to the nearest uh, yeah. station. I am now on my own walking down the road to find a station. Uh, we're going to do the old fashioned, do the old fashioned uh, hitchhike. This way is a faster way to a closer town. So I'm going to start here and see if I can uh, see if I can get a ride. Here we go. Wish me luck. I got to find a battery. There's nobody out here. It's empty. There's nobody even passing. I just realized I don't have a mask and I got dropped off at this auto zone. I wonder if they'll I wonder if they'll sell me a battery. I think they'll sell me a battery without a mask if I tell them my poor situation. I don't I don't know if they will. We'll see. That wasn't bad at all. I got picked up pretty quick. Wasn't that far into town. Got the Dura last battery. It's about time. <laughs> Eric's got everything pulled out. 
hope I got the right battery. Looks okay. Makes it seem a lot hotter out here when you're not moving around. That's for sure. Okay. I think we're good. You want to go try and fire it up? You got the keys? Okay, so we had some problems on this trip. I haven't made a trip out where I for, I didn't forget my tools, let's be honest. I just got lazy and didn't bring them all because I thought the bikes were running good. Um, we should come down uh, on the street, but I always say you can't put the same load on those bikes on the street as you can in the sand. Paddles in the sand puts a huge load those motors and um, that's where one of them didn't run right the 472 there's something intermittent about it like sometimes I can get off the throttle and back in it and get it on the pipe and once it's on the pipe it stays on the pipe and runs great um, and then sometimes it falls off the pipe and you can hold the throttle wide open and it'll just sputter and spit and, and move but not fast and then you kick it down a couple gears and flip the throttle open and close and it gets back on the pipe and then you can bang up through the gears again uh, most people uh, would say that it's jetting and it's too fat and sometimes you can get on the pipe and sometimes you can't depending on how much load is on the motor which is a true statement that does happen uh, but that's not happening in this we went down all the way to 160s and all the way up to 175s and it's doing the same thing no matter what jet it has in it. Sometimes it stays on the pipe and sometimes it doesn't. And I know uh, from experience in building these a lot, these Cubs and Super Cubs, you can throw tons and tons of fuel at them and they will still run and they will get on the pipe and they will not sputter. Um, I run as large as 185s in them and they run fine. Um, Probably most of them, depending on the porting, will run in the 165 to 170 area. Not this one. So I'm going to start just swapping everything out, um, including the wiring harness, CDI. I, I know we checked it all, but there's something funny. I'm even going to put new carbs on it. I'm just going to change all the guts of everything electrical. And, and, uh, and, and carburetor and intake on it. What are you running over in the road? You're shaking the truck to death. He's trying. He's trying to kill my truck. He's trying to kill my poor old truck. We got to keep this truck going. It's the Herd Jugs racing truck. We're gonna make it live forever, just like these two strokes. <laughs> 